all and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Hello. Mrs. Farmer. Hello. Troubles are brewing. I like it. Now, obviously, we got something going on here. If you look around us, you'll see jars and you'll see vegetables. It's a mess in here, isn't it? But it's a good mess. Yes. It's a fun mess. Yes. It smells good. We know what's going on. It's canning time. Mm -hmm. It's harvest right. time. So now we can't take credit for growing most of this stuff. Any of it. <laughs> Any of it. The heirloom tomatoes, some of the odd colored ones, and the red okra and the peppers were provided by Hummingbird Holler Heirloom Produce. Say that 10 times as fast as you I'll can. I'll just say Michelle. I know Michelle has Michelle. them. <laughs> That's right. These non heirloom tomatoes were provided from our good buddy Mike. Exactly. Nice tomatoes. We've got an interesting show for you. And the other day, I had one of those moments. I guess I had just enough coffee to be clear headed hmm. in the morning, and I was full of energy, had a good night's sleep, and I walked out in the yard. And my eye was really itching above my eyelid. Yeah. Now, you know, any time that we have a sting or anything, we, we look for some broadleaf plantain. Right. So I reached down. Mm -hmm. I grabbed some. This wasn't a sting. But I, this, this place had been itching for like three or four days. Now, it's probably because the ragweed right. is coming on. Alex, and I'm itching my yeah. eyes a lot. So I took some of this plantain. I tried to find, you know, it's later in the summer now. Right. But I tried to get a really small leaf that's just coming mm -hmm. on. And I really wadded it up. Did it work? Just, it worked. Really? So I took that broadleaf plantain and I started thinking and doing some research about it. They are considered an invasive species because they didn't okay. start here. What made the Europeans, before they came across here, what made them bring the seeds and the plants and cultivate them here and spread them around everywhere? They became so ubiquitous that the Native Americans called them white man's foot or white man's footstep. Hmm. They knew anywhere the Europeans had been, these plants were everywhere. Really? So what made these people think, okay, I'm going to take the time to bring this across the Atlantic and spread it all over the United States. Was you that can find it everywhere now. Was that important to them to bring? When you go out to our yard, mm -hmm. it looks fairly well maintained. I like right. to mow. Yeah, you do. But we never spray. Mm -mm. All the green stuff that you see, most of it is not grass. It's right. a combination of clovers and violets. and broad oh, yeah. leaves and dandelions. We don't cut that. So here this stuff is all over the place. Here is the ironic thing that really got to me. You start reading about what it does for your stomach, mm -hmm. if you have an upset stomach. They used it in stews and soups. They used it for skin ailments. Shakespeare in Romeo and Juliet talked about the healing properties of broadleaf really? plantain. Really? Yes. I missed that part. So, yeah. <laughs> I did. So here we are, here's the irony. People go out into their yards today, mm -hmm. they take a poison right. that systemically kills a plant. Mm -hmm. They take this poison, we don't know, it could harm us. Right. Some people are saying some of these chemicals that they're using could harm us. So they're taking something noxious, a chemical to kill a plant that could very well make us better. Right. So Does that of, blow your mind? Yeah, a little bit. But I started thinking about the old timers that showed me these things years ago. We're going to go in depth. But first, we got five minutes. Okay. And our tomatoes are done. So now, you know the old pressure cooker over here? Right. You know the jiggly yeah. top? Mm -hmm. You know, here's that's the bottom one's five pounds and the next one's 10, yeah. 15 pounds pressure. There's a lot of things you have to take into consideration when you're pressure cooking. First thing, if we did these pint jars of tomatoes and this, right. the cook time would be less. Why? Yeah. Because of the pressure and the right. intense heat. Those have to, that core temperature has to really get up there. Some things you have to keep in mind about canning, pH, acidity. If you don't have much acid, then you're going to have to probably pressure cook. If you have meats, you're going to have to pressure right. cook because you've got to kill every bit of oh, bacteria, yeah. salmonella that could be in that. We've got tomatoes in here right now, just regular red tomatoes, and we're just raw packing right. tomatoes. What are we making next, Nikki? Salsa. We're going to make a salsa, and I'm going to use some of these heirloom tomatoes over okay. here because they're green. Yeah. Have a nice, yeah, good color. Nice green color. Yeah. Now, what's the process that you use here to get these things peeled? Well, we're going to flash boil them in this okay. for a little bit. When it looks like the skins are kind of moving a little bit, I'm going to fill that up with water and put a little ice in it, and mm -hmm. we're going to put them in there, and that way I can pull the skins off without burning my fingers off. They come right off. Yeah. Works good. The easiest thing that we're doing tonight is probably the raw packing, right. hot packing. That's easy to do. It's just work. The tomatoes, yeah. 
Now, what's better in the wintertime when you don't have fresh tomatoes? You want to make some right. tomato sauce? Oh, yeah. Spaghetti. Yeah. Now, we're going to do some spaghetti sauce at a later date, but that involves pressure Lots canning. Work, yeah. So let's think about some of the things we've done in the past. We've done way back, one of the first things we ever did, canning banana peppers. Remember That's that? Right. Way, I did way back. back. Yeah. Then we showed how to can several things at the cabin. Mm -hmm. Then we showed how to can meats. That's right. Did you know you can can meats? Those are good. Now towards the end of the season, you gather everything out of the garden that you have right. left, and you make your end of season relish, which mom calls. Chow chow. And we absolutely love that. Yes, we do. So Mrs. Farmer, we are there. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Now something to remember about canning, whether it's a pressure cooker or a hot bath, you wanna let these cool down a little bit. Yeah. Because what happens if you just jerk them out of hot water into yeah. a fairly yeah. cool temperature? Yeah, not good. They can explode or they it's can not good. break. <laughs> it's not good. I even, a lot of times, and we should probably do this, as we take these out, hold it out a little bit and I'll shield you with a towel okay. as you set them over here, just to make sure that that water doesn't come on. So kind of stand with your feet back. Okay. It's always a good idea. Yeah. I've had them break before. Kind of stand with your feet back. Okay, these are raw packed. What does that mean? That means we put our tomatoes in here without any juice, mm -hmm. without any water. We just take the tomatoes. After you flash boil them, mm -hmm. you put them in your cold water and the skins just come right off. Right. You core them, you get rid of the skin, you get rid of anything that doesn't look so good. And then basically you pop those into the jar. Now what comes in after that? You need some acid. You need to bump up the acid just a little bit. Tomatoes are right on the borderline. Yeah. You can use, which you bought at the store, citric acid, okay. like a quarter yeah. teaspoon per pint. You can use lemon. You can actually take maybe a quarter teaspoon of lemon right. juice and put it in, bring that acid up. About a half inch space at the top. And the salt. Salt. Right. Our jars have been sterilized, the mm -hmm. lids have been sterilized. Make sure after you get the tomatoes in, you wipe off the right. lid, around the lid, tighten the top just till it's snug. You don't have to go over tight. And make sure that the water covers your jars completely. 85 minutes, that sounds like a lot, but yeah. 85 minutes, even for a pint when you've raw packed these things. Now, now I always careful. think it's a good idea. Have a towel, stand back, don't hold it over top of your feet, mm -hmm. and let's take it to the rag. Now in a little while, hopefully when we're talking and messing around, we're gonna hear a ding, mm -hmm. ding, ding. What does that mean? We did good, and they're sealing. They seal. That's right. If they don't seal, what do you do? What do we do? Pop it in the refrigerator. Oh, good After idea. After they cool okay, down, good idea. use it immediately. Just use it quick, it's a good idea. That means it just didn't get the good seal. And you know, people say, how long can it last? Well, how long do you want it to last? Usually when we can, we want to do just enough to get us through to the next right. year. Right, yeah. So I don't necessarily want them to last for 20 years. Now they could last several years, right. I'm sure, but we never give them a chance. Now if you want to do your own spaghetti sauce, and we like meat in our right. sauce, you can cook your own spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. Use fresh tomatoes, take your meat, we like sweet yeah. Italian sausage. Now not too long ago, we made our own sweet Italian sausage. That's right out of our pigs, mm -hmm. and we showed how to do that. If you want to look at that, take a, a look at this video we did a while back in the cabin. Cook your meat, mm -hmm. combine everything, your sauces, your spices, right. put it in a quart jar, do the same thing we just did, then put it in a pressure cooker mm -hmm. because it's got meat in it. That right. means 90 minutes, 90 minutes. Yeah. When you're pressure cooking, altitude is an issue. Look at your guides, look online, look at your canning books. Mm -hmm. Anything over a thousand feet, things get different. If you get the higher you go, the different the poundage you right. use on top. That's what these little rings are for. But we're not worried about that tonight. We're hot bathing everything. That's right. All right, Mrs. Farmer, you ready for some green tomatoes? I am. I'm ready. Now, again, these aren't green tomatoes. These are heirloom. These are fully ripe. And we're going to take just enough of these to do some sauce. I, I think some green sauce will be Yeah, I like the nice. color. So let's get our green tomatoes started. Same sort of thing. We're gonna peel them and okay. get them going. All right, Mrs. Farmer, mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you pick. Okay. What temperature? One through 10. Maybe three. Three? Three, four, three and a half. Three and a half, four. Yeah, three and a half, four, yes. Three and a half, four. Not okay, too hot. so what does that mean? It's adjustable. It's how okay. you want it. Yeah. And, and we're, we like heat, but I don't like to be. I don't want to burn up. Tears streaming right. out of my eyes. And <laughs> then there's tomorrow. That's right. Don't forget the day after. That's right. It's going to be bad. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, let's take, we've got about 
five cups. We're gonna make a yes. small batch. And let's, I mashed them with this. Mash. And we don't measure anything, but I'm right. gonna guess we want some onion. So okay. let's take our cowboy chopper. We probably won't use that whole onion, Nick. I'd say just eyeballing it, probably three quarters of it. Alrighty. And cut it nice and fine. I'm gonna put it in the chopper. How's that? That's perfect. All right. What do you think, Mrs. Warmer? Looks good to me. I like mine. Good ratio. Yes, I like mine. All right, this is a very basic, very basic. I like the fact that it's a green. I do too. So what we're gonna do here is just the onions, the cilantro. Some peppers. Yeah. We can do some green bell green peppers pepper. and some jalapeno. And, and again, you're only going four on this. How about a little garlic too? Do a little garlic. All right. Do a little garlic. And the most important thing to me is at the very end, the cumin. Okay. It's the most important thing to me. So I'd say three or four tablespoons of that. We're going to take one jalapeno pepper and we're going to take the seeds out of those. Those are fairly small cloves. Let's go three cloves of garlic. Right. We're going to come back with some cilantro. We're gonna use about, oh, I don't know, a third of a cup chopped cilantro. I'm gonna mix all that up. That wow. really smells good, doesn't it? That smells really good. Uh -huh. We're gonna take a half a cup of white vinegar. A heaping half teaspoon. That's super heaping. Of cumin. That's a super heap. Now we gotta use our sniffer here in a second to make sure it smells legit. Now we're gonna let this go about 30 minutes. Okay until it starts to come to boil. I see boil. Yeah, once, once it comes to a boil, we're gonna kind of turn it down and let it simmer, but you want to thicken up, reduce just a little bit. Then, Ooh. we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it into jars. What do you think, three on this Maybe one? three, yeah, you never know. This is a small batch, yeah. we just wanna show you how we do it. You know one thing that you forget about canning until you do it the next year is the smell. Oh, how good it smells. Oh, especially the relishes. And the... Look what I found too, I forgot about uh -huh. this, perfect. You're a genius, Mrs. Smart. That's right, sometimes. Oh, that smells good. It's making me want some some nacho chips to do. Oh, no. This is our last chance to do just a little bit of quality control. I've seen big hunks. Chop oh, them up. smells good. All right, Mrs. Farmer. We'll lay a little on. Imagine this late night nachos. That would be good. That's what we like to eat. Mm -hmm. This thing's nice. It helps them from spilling, too, doesn't it? About a half inch head space. About there. Looks like that's about it. Perfect. Yep. Yep. One small batch for us, but one huge batch for nacho kind. You wrap them? Wipe them here. You smell that? Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got the water boiling over here, Mrs. Farmer. Alrighty. And again, your jars need to be completely covered with water. Those are already hot. As we plop them into boiling water. And again, this is a small batch. There's your tomato. Do that Let's one go else. ahead and pop in there in here. Now he's got to stay in there a little, a little bit longer. longer. Oh, we'll get the other ones out. I'm going to pull his friends out. He'll be so lonely. That's right. So these, so it is 12 after. Remember that? 20 minutes. Okay. On a rolling boil. Are we done? You know something a lot of people don't know? Is this fairly late right yes, now? Yes, it is. It's past our bedtime. Are you going to feed me? But well, we got started. That's right. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you what her plans are for after right. this. Because we got so busy, we forgot to, we forgot to eat. lay anything out. So she's got plans for. We can't just eat salsa. For. I want a burger and fries. <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> so we're going to turn this off. It has it been good. 20 minutes. We're going to let that set for four or five minutes and cool down. So the tomatoes are ready to go. They're all sealed. They're sitting there all by themselves. They're looking for company. We're about okay. to give them some. Now, you know what? Tonight, after we're done here, we're going to knock it off and take a break and come back tomorrow. We're going to take a walk. Okay. A 50 yard walk in any direction. You're not going to believe what we find. Hmm. Now, the important thing I want to bring out is for us, mm -hmm. we're not on our soapbox, but we don't spray. Right. We don't use any kind of spray for any kind of weeds or anything. Mm -hmm. We have bees. Yeah. We have happy bees. We have three hives of happy bees. We don't want them to be packing in stuff that's, that's, right. that's not kosher. Make our honey bed. So anyhow, we're going to find out what's in that little radius area, and you're going to be surprised. I will I be think surprised. I'll be learn. Surprised. I will learn from that. I'm looking forward to Let's it. Let's give us a couple more minutes, and we'll pop those out. Are you excited, Mrs. I'm Farmer? so excited. Are you tired? You know what I'm excited about? Getting oh. this done so you'll take me to eat. <laughs> I'm excited. 
late night snack place. That's right. I'm starving. Oh, those look Again, good. Very carefully. They look pretty. We're actually kind of shielding ourselves. Those are really that. pretty. I'll tip that over just a little bit to get the water off. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? That does look good. Looks, looks absolutely wonderful. I'm excited to use it. We have to have a party. Look at there. You know what? Maybe we ought to build a little shelf over there to display Just to have our on. stuff. You know, that's a good idea. I Seriously, like that. I like right that. There, to show our to hard see. work. Yeah. You know what? Tomatoes here, salsa there. I like the green salsa with the heirloom tomatoes. I, I do like too. the whole idea. I do too. All right. We're going to sign off for the evening mm -hmm. and go do something really bad. Okay. <laughs> what do we have in the evening? I want a burger and fries. No ice cream. Oh, maybe a hey, malt too would hey. be good. We're not on vacation. Yet. Okay. Not yet. We'll see you tomorrow. So you look around, you know, it's it's late, late summer. Right. It's been dry. Mm -hmm. It looks kind of dry. Um, that's not the yard past the wagon over there. The yard's over this way. Now, as I walked out the other day, I looked at the yard. Now, I'm going to look right down here. It's mostly not grass. That's right. But we had a friend come in the other day. In fact, it was Chino. Mm -hmm. Chino said, man, your yard looks really good. looks like a <laughs> golf course. I'm like, yeah. As we look at this picture right here, that was my dad's nightmare as yes, a kid. That's right. I was out there with this little fork. Getting the weed. Like tool. It wasn't a fork, <laughs> but it was, it was like a, a screwdriver with a right. prong on it. You know I what I'm talking one. about? I had one too. So yeah. I had to dig up dandelions and mm -hmm. dig up broadleaf and anything that was yard that was not grass. This is not a sprayed yard. It's never been sprayed. So if I let this grow up, do you know how many edible plants are right here? Just look in this picture. You have broadleaf, you have dandelion, mm -hmm. there's sorrel everywhere. We're gonna talk about one plant that we have right over here in just a minute, but I talked about the other day when I had the AGI. That's right. I took some broadleaf, pulled it right out of the yard, just wadded it up, just wadded it up, and just kind of rubbed it on my eye. It has not itched since. And it was You're just under days before yeah. that. And Kelly was even telling me that there are people who take this, boil it down, and make kind of a, a cream out of it. Really? So if they have a skin issue. That's a good idea. So anyway, my intent was to go around and within 50 steps, and we're going to do this right. eventually, but Kelly informed me we don't have that much time because we're canning earlier, okay. and you got one more recipe you got to throw. But the first thing that we see within this 50-yard radius there's so much. We have grape leaves, we have jewel weed, we mm -hmm. have black-eyed Susans. You won't believe what you can use black-eyed Susans for. Really? It goes on and on. There's too much tonight. But first, let's go visit the Eastern Prickly Pear Cactus. I was wearing some of that in my you legs. You were, you stepped into it, that's right. Let's take a peek. <laughs> You're probably looking at this cactus and thinking, well, those aren't a native species, but they are. The eastern prickly pear cactus goes all the way from like Texas all the way to Connecticut. They're everywhere. What kind of soil do they like? Ours. The worst. <laughs> they like we, ours. Our, this is south facing. This is the poorest soil in the world and they thrive. Now, this is a patch right here. This is one of our smaller patches. Mom and dad brought what? Three pads yes. or no pals. The pad itself is called a no pal. The big needles are called spines. Okay. The small ones are called glycoids. You don't want either one of them in you. I had two in I've had just them. a little while yes. ago. These in the spring are beautiful. They are. They have a yellow and orange bloom. Here's a picture of them in full bloom. We have one, two, three, four, five different areas where these grow. And we started with three little ones. Three little ones. Mom and dad brought yes. them. We set them right here, they took off. Next thing you know, they're over here, they're over here. So mm -hmm. if you have the right situation, they will grow. Right. Now the nopals, the pads, that's the main thing you want to eat. How would you take the needles out of them? Or... Uh-huh. I tried this the other day when you weren't here to see if it worked. Did you? Run it under cold water, that knocks a lot of the little glycoids off. Obviously, handle them with gloves. Gloves, yeah. You can take that with a vegetable peeler, take that off, cut it into strips, and you can cook it like a green bean. Really? There's so many dishes you can make out of this. And it's very commonly used in uh, Mexico and Central America. Now, the fruit, a little later in the fall, it'll turn kind of reddish, call that a pear. 
you can eat that. Now the thing is you need to again make sure everything is off of that and it has a sweet fruit on the inside. Now the hmm. seeds are really tough yeah. and kind of hard. You can eat them but you don't want to chew them because they're really hard. Just kind of chew around them. The flowers that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. the flowers can be used in salads. They have a wonderful taste and the bees, our bees love them. Yeah. Protein, potassium, it's good for you. Right. Now that's the first thing on our list. My goal was to go out and walk in a 50 yard circle. Right. I was overwhelmed in 10 feet the other day. So we're gonna save that for a show when we walk out and talk about all the things within X amount of space. So, do you think you can get up now by yourself? No, I'm you're gonna have, you're to, have to pull you. me up. All right, I'm let's see. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This particular show could have been 26 hours long. It could have. <laughs> I had so many things I wanted to talk about. It's it's a time of the year when there's a lot of stuff going on. Right. So in the next couple of shows, we're really going to venture out and talk about some great things and cook outside. Right. We can well. get outside. It's nice. We out. can do that. It's nice. Um, we did some canning. Mm -hmm. I snuck into the salsa. Did you? It was delicious. It, yeah. Now people like their salsa differently. When we go right. to the restaurant here in Frankfurt, they have really really good salsa. They but do. It's almost. It's just almost like a liquid. It is blended in. But it's really good. It's, it's right. blended. That's a good word. The salsa we did was kind of in between. There's mm -hmm. some chunks in it. It's like natural. That. It's good. It's delicious. And we did it with green tomatoes, mm -hmm. not unripe green tomatoes, heirloom right. tomatoes. We got these from our friend Michelle at Hummingbird Hollow. Now the red tomatoes, for the most part, were from Mac. Right. And we just love to have our own tomatoes. Oh, yeah. We'll probably make some tomato sauce later mm -hmm. as well. But Spaghetti. Oh, mm. Man, oh man, oh man. But Sean, our time is running short. One thing I did want to include, we just didn't have time for, is your pepper jelly. Right. You can take these and just spread it on a cracker, a piece of toast with some cream cheese. Mm -hmm. I Delicious. absolutely love it. Kelly makes it too. And if you will, real quick, just give people the recipe. All right. It looks like this when you're done. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. Go ahead and read the recipe off. Well, there's you will. a lot of different recipes. I did mine is a banana pepper basil because I'm mm -hmm. growing basil. Because we got plenty of basil. I wanted to do that. Here's what I did. I took two banana peppers and chopped them up really fine. Of course, in my little chopper, mm -hmm. I took one jalapeno pepper, right. a shallot, a small shallot, chopped all three of those up together. Then I threw in four basil leaves that was fresh right. off our plant, and I put in a quarter a teaspoon of dry basil, and I added three quarters a cup of vinegar and three cups of sugar. I put it all on the stove in the pan, heated it up to boiling. Once it got boiling so that I couldn't even, you know, get the boiling to stop, turned it off. I added one pouch of the liquid pectin, and you got to put that in and got to boil it again. And once you got to go for one minute, boil it, turned everything off, got my jars ready, cleaned them all up, wiped them up, and I loaded all my jars up, sealed them up, and put them in a hot bath for 10 minutes of boiling water. That's it. Done. You got jelly. Let me tell you what, I wish they had a candle that could make your oh, house yeah. smell like this. That's Seriously? The house smelled like heaven for like a day and a half. I ate it with a spoon. I know that's bad. I was spooning it and eating well, it. Well, that's good stuff. But it's also, <laughs> I'm getting a nod from Kelly. You know what time it is? It's time to wrap this up. You know what? If you would like to have these recipes, I bet I know where you can find them. Where would you go? I would go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. You would not. I do all the time. So many <laughs> recipes, things to do on there, how, how to do things. Golly. Also, people are also talking on our Facebook page. That's now right. that's really difficult. There's almost no way to get on our Facebook page, but if you were gonna try to do that, how would you do it? I would hit like. It's not that easy. It's, it's that easy. We want <laughs> you to be our Facebook friend. All you do, have to do is hit like. And you know what, Mrs. Farmer? At this time, that half hour rushed by. Yes, it did. And we got big plans for next week. We do. But this one's all about Good times. Good friends. And really good eats. Right here. I'm going to go eat the jelly. I'm just going to drink it. Okay. <laughs> to order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.